Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I hope you are all well and staying safe. Um, I'm slowly trying to get through my stash of model kits and uh, it's my intention to basically um, just keep building and building until the stash is at a reasonable level. Um, and I wanted something that was in 170 second scale to put together after doing the 1700 scale ships and I come across this. Now I do like road and kits, unfortunately road and kits don't like me. I complete very few of them. Uh, I don't know what it is. Um, I've got an idea on some occasions that the, the fit hasn't been particularly good but it may have been my fault. On another occasion the plastic's been a bit brittle and I've snapped stuff and it's like stuff that really you need intact in order to complete the build so i really do like the um the kits that they produce and the some of the subjects but as i say i just have a problem putting them together so i'll just uh, show you the uh, the parts so here's the first uh, sprue i've pulled out and as you can see this is the um you've got the lower section i think of the omnibus here um, you've got the, the, I think that may be the footwell for the seating. Um, and then this may be the upper deck seating. Um, and then you've got the sections in between the cab and the omnibus itself. Then there are two sprues that are the same. <clears throat> and these have the road wheels on. And again, I think... This part here is some of the seating, and so this may be upstairs, and this is downstairs, or something like that. So, as I say, you get two of those sprues. Next sprue, you've got the stairs, at least I can identify that. Um, you've got the fenders for the for the front of the vehicle. This uh, These long sections are the chassis. Um, I think that's like a, a handrail for going around the stairs. This is the um, glazing for the omnibus. Um, so you've got the glazing for the downstairs. I think that's um, going to be between. Now that I think that's between the two, the, the the cab and the and the rear. And I don't know where that might be for. It may be the actual rear of the vehicle. Interestingly. This particular part wasn't in its own plastic bag, which is a bit odd because I would have thought it was easy to scratch. Here are the decals. Um, sorry about the glare. Which um, There's a lot you can put on the one um, omnibus. There are two um, different vehicles that you can do. I'll probably go for the one with the least amount of decals. And here are the instructions, so this front page gives you a very good history of the vehicle. Here you have the um, sprue tree. The sprue tree continued and then we start getting the um, instructions for the actual construction. <coughs> This is not a parts heavy kit, I think there are 48 altogether, although numbers may be duplicated. Yeah, some numbers are duplicated, so perhaps there's more like 60. Um, as I say, the one thing that I have found in the past is that the plastic can be a bit brittle with these kits. I have tried to build both military um, vehicles and aircraft from this company and I'm not sure whether I've actually ever succeeded in producing one yet and I know that I've had a go at, at, at least two, possibly three. Here's the, um, the two omnibuses you can make. This one's um, called White 8, uh, British Expeditionary Forces Western Front, France 1917 and then you've got this one here, uh, British Expeditionary Forces Western Front, France, end of 1918 
this one is the one plastic with decals and it's got different regiments that uh, were transported on this vehicle I think so you've got the 2nd Shropshires um, you've got the 9th Durhams 2nd Royal Yorks Fusiliers uh, in the Skillings I think are there as well so that one would make for a very interesting uh, build with all the decals plastered on and I may go for the more mundane vehicle and then there's a nice bit of bit of art on the back showing a, an omnibus and you've got um, Royal Artillery um, firing there I, it, it's got um, on the side RND and I'm wondering if that decal is actually for Royal Naval Division uh, and this isn't uh, Royal Artillery it's actually um, like Royal Navy Artillery so I may have to look that up and see if I can find any more information on that so this is uh, another one of those builds where I give the introduction show some progress and then um, the finished result at the end so I'm going to go away now and start constructing this and uh, I'll see you in a bit okay guys so a bit of progress on this build and as I mentioned earlier in the video road and kits have been a bit of a problem for me and this one has certainly been challenging so far so I shall get the kit and we'll have a look at some of the issues together so uh, as you can see most of the lower section uh, of the of the bus is complete I've just got to add one side and we've got the driver's seats the um, floor of the cab and then the engine on the on the front but I have to say to get to this point um, I have had some real head scratching moments and the other thing is I am so glad that I put this together with the Tamiya Extra Thin because four or five times I have had to run the glue around um, pieces that have been stuck together in order to get them to come away if I hadn't <coughs> used extra thin I'm pretty sure that the, the parts would have been damaged beyond use so but I will try and explain some of the issues that I've come across so I think we'll go with the one that's uh, clearest in my memory at the moment because it was the biggest uh, pain in the neck that I, I had <clears throat> and it's all to do with this section here the fitting of this this oh, the, oh, the seats aren't an issue because they just go on the top of there but certainly this part and this part now this shows you to fit that to that location and then that sits on the front of that so you fit these two bits under the carriage you then fit the um, floor of the cab to the front of the cab and to those and then everything just kind of butts up so you get the the firewall is it and then you get the engine and you it all bang 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 no what problem is. what i mistakenly done was i thought this seat section and this lower section fitted in the width of the carriage and that this part sat further forward as indicated on the plans but that's not the case what I would recommend when you're doing this is this piece here this L-shaped piece which goes <clears throat> forms the seats you put that in first and it butts up to the edge of the carriage it doesn't fit inside it and then put this detail um, behind that seat okay then you fit the floor of the carriage the firewall and the engine and it all comes nicely together but that was a real head scratcher I could not work out how to close that gap up I thought that I'd put these on too far back or too far forward but it turns out that's what it was the other issues I've had with this kit um, the, the um, drive shaft I managed to snap got it off the sprue perfectly no problems then I had it in my hand and I was reaching across with my other hand to get something just brushed the top of it and it snapped like a, a dry twig 
which I've had issues with um, with um, Broden kits before I've mentioned that before PC snapping um, it has been a bit of a battle I think with with the Roden kit what you have to do is if you're in doubt look at stages beyond where you are so you can see where parts are being fitted or what they look like once fitted to give you an idea of where they need to be fitted when you when you're at that stage um, but it's getting there um, I wouldn't say I've got more parts on the build than there are left to do but I, I feel as if for the first time I might actually achieve to finish a road and build and and it would be great if it was this one one of the things I'm considering doing is not putting the glazing in because part of me thinks that they wouldn't have had the glazing the, the box art on the front shows glazing but you know there is part of me thinking would they really retain glass um, when you've got HE going off or whatever or bullets flying everywhere and I, I think I might leave it off anyway the battery is going on the camera so I'll catch up with you in a couple of seconds right so here is the uh, build practically constructed the only thing that's left is the seats in the top deck I've got to be put in but what I thought I'd do is get it undercoated um, and then get it mainly painted, painted and then put the seats in one of the things I wanted to show you was uh, this thing managed to throw me a curveball just before um, getting to this point and there is I think a mistake in the instructions that I just want to point out so I'm trying to get this all in so that you can see it so basically with the seats there are nine seats altogether there are four of this one and there are five of that one so you construct these obviously and then you get ready to put them in the top deck now um, I made a mistake I had the seats upside down uh, so that the padding for the back was actually on the seat um, and that wasn't my fault that was your fault because I was watching um, videos that you guys were producing and commenting on them and I wasn't watching what I was doing I was watching the videos instead so that's on you so Tuesday morning at the 25th if I commented on your video then that's your fault okay so quickly I managed to get the Tamiya extra thin and get these um, supports off and switch them round but the next issue was not my fault as far as I can work out and I'm hoping that you will agree okay I've had to try and concertina the uh, instructions so you can see exactly what I'm talking about so it says here construct four of these using these parts and construct five of these using these parts and it calls that step nine <clears throat> for those four and step ten for those five but when you go to fit the seats it says 10 fit there and 9 fit there <laughs> but they're showing that there's 4 of 10 and 5 of 9 but on these instructions they're showing that there's 4 of 9 and 5 of 10 so <laughs> that's got to be wrong um, fortunately there's enough in the kit for you to make um, 5 of 9 uh, and obviously there will be enough for 4 of 10 so I, I sorted that one out but it, it, it still took some head scratching and, a, and it was it was almost like the final thing to do uh, on this build before starting to paint it and whatever as I say I'm going to add the seats um, after I've painted it um, because obviously I can't get under them and once they're in place I can't get under where I, you know foot, where the the feet of the soldiers would be or um, directly under the seat so I'm going to fit them after so you've seen the mock-up and um, the, the top deck wasn't glued to the bottom uh, again because I want to get in there and paint um, so hopefully the next time you see this it will actually have some paint on it what I intend to do is um, is paint it Vallejo's model air um, dark green and I'm going to try and use the airbrush for this because I think there's lots of nooks and crannies that I won't be able to reach with the brush and so I'm hoping that the airbrush will sort that out for me 
So as I say, next time you see this, um, hopefully it will have this paint on. Okay guys, well I managed to get um, 20 minutes down the garage in between the the rain squalls uh, during this storm that we're having and uh, I basically got uh, the dark green sprayed on her, her now so hopefully the next time you'll see this um, she will be complete. What I've got to do now is uh, I'm going to give this the rest of the evening um, to just dry out uh, and then tomorrow I shall add the clear, uh, put the decals on if you remember I'm just doing the very simple, um, I think it's uh, is it RNB on the side, just doing those simple ones, um, seal those in and then do a sludge wash and I think <clears throat> that'll be it then, bit of weathering on the bottom, paint the tyres black, um, put the seats on, uh, paint those up obviously uh, and that'll, that'll be it done so I'm hoping to have this completed tomorrow night, uh, Wednesday night. Um, we shall see, fingers crossed. So guys I've managed to finish the build, you'll be pleased to know, thanks ever so much for sticking with me. Um, I'm really chuffed because this is the first uh, kit from Roden that I've managed to complete. Before I do the final reveal, uh, any of you who are new to the channel, welcome. And uh, if you like this video and the other videos that I've done, then perhaps you'll consider hitting the subscribe button, I would really appreciate that. Okay, let's uh, have a look at the build. So here she is guys, um, all complete. After I'd uh, finished the construction, you will know that I sprayed this with um, Vallejo's Model Air Dark Green, um, then I gave it a coat of clear varnish, put the decals down, sealed those in with clear varnish, and then I mixed some black pastel in water and with a bit of washing up liquid to do a sludge wash. Once that was dry, I worked most of that off, leaving it in the recesses. <clears throat> then I stippled on some flat earth from Vallejo and painted it on some locations just to give an idea where soldiers had walked up the stairs and to their seats and the driver and co-driver getting in the cab and where the wheels had gone through muddy lanes. And then the final thing I did was um, got a lighter shade of green and just um, stippled that on the in the middle of some of the panels just to give a bit of a highlight and on the edges of the mud guards and things. As I've mentioned I'm just over the moon that I've managed to finish a road and kit. But at the same time, I always find it a bit more poignant um, building World War I um, kits. Uh, I don't know what it is, to be honest. Um, World War II, obviously I used to have living relatives and uh, who took part in that. and So it was a very important part of British history. But I don't know whether it was almost the... I don't want to say stupidity, that's the wrong word, because that that dishonours the memory of people who served but <clears throat> it just seemed that Europe was spoiling for a fight and any excuse would have created it and it's sad so I think that's what it is for me it's just a, a sad episode but um, I just want to thank you guys for, for watching and s sitting through this video and again thank you to my uh, my new subscribers, I really appreciate it, and the old hands too who have stuck with me. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon.